So at the end of my second questions people ask me video, I believe it was, I mentioned in passing um, that, um, yeah, blind, not all blind people care um, how the world around them looks, um, but some of us do. Um, and I've had a lot of people tell me not to make this video before I go any further. And uh, a lot tell me that I should. So, well, here's hoping that I'm right in um, going ahead with it. But fact is this, I could see for nearly nine years um, and I was an artist. Um, and so what the world looked like, um, colors, shapes, um, animals, people, buildings, vehicles, all of that was so much of my world. Um, and to suddenly find myself without the ability to look at things, to look at people, to look at vehicles and animals, um, it's, it's quite an adjustment. Uh, and it's not one that I've ever comfortably made. Um, if you can imagine, you know, waking up every morning and before you even go to school or have your breakfast or sometimes even get out of your pyjamas, you're across to your bookshelf and you're pick picking up books about dinosaurs and human evolution and going through books about the Renaissance, Renaissance you know, art period or the surrealist art period or art from ancient Egypt and ancient China. Um, and, and, and looking at, um, you know, color illustrations of the, um, artwork of, um, you know, artwork about, I should say, you know, the, the myths to do with ancient Greece, ancient Rome and, and the Norse gods, all this is brightly colored and all lit up and, 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 you know, then there's all the comic books and the kids television and, all the different movies I would have been taking in and TV shows and, um, you know, MTV from the late eighties and early nineties. And, um, you know, all the, all the quaint old stuff like the Beatles and, uh, Dolly Parton and, and, um, you know, all that stuff from the sixties and seventies that my, my, my family insisted that, uh, was better than the eighties and nineties. Um, to suddenly go from that to just, lights off and zero visual stimuli, it's more than a rude adjustment. It's, it's very jarring. It's, it's like, uh, you've stepped into an alternate dimension and you're just a stranger in a strange land. Um, and the idea that you can just decide, nah, it's cool. I'm happy with this new non-visual existence is, for me anyway, not possible. Um, so, you know, I, you know, I, I, I refused when I was told that TV and movies were for the sighted world and I wasn't to be interested. I didn't buy that and I still don't. Um, and I studied visual art, even though I was blind and I still, um, you know, if I know a person really well for a long time, uh, there will still be times when I wonder what that person looks like. And I still, you know, follow Natural History Channel and, and, and you know, um, National Geographic and, you know, wonder what these new species they're discovering and these new buildings that they've uncovered are like. And, um, you know, I, I, I still look into, you know, all the latest discoveries about, you know, human evolution and... and um, paleontology and so on. And no, I can't see these things. But that doesn't mean there's not a part of me that doesn't wonder all the time. And it's probably not helpful. It's probably the last thing I should be doing. Um, and finding out how a person looks is something that technically I can't ever do uh, until somebody works out a way of restoring sight for me or for anybody else. Um, the closest I can ever get is pretty close. Um, but that doesn't mean that 
I'm willing to accept the idea that I should just say, yeah, whatever. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm happy to pretend like I don't care. Um, because as a sighted person yourself watching this, you know that so much of the world is based on how things look, how things appear. And to have to act like that isn't the case would mean denying reality. And I'm sorry, but that's just not something I can do.